Hello, my name is Adam. Today we'll be going over some maintenance techniques for the equipment of Seabird Electronics. We're going to take a look at the battery compartment of the Seabird CCAT family of CTDs. The battery compartment is located opposite of the connector end of the CTD. And to inspect the batteries, you just unscrew this white cap in a counterclockwise motion. Most of the time you should be able to unscrew it by hand, but if you need additional assistance, you can use a screwdriver to put inside the lift eye and turn in the same counterclockwise motion. Once you've unscrewed the battery end cap, you should be able to see the battery cover plate. There are two terminals on the cover plate for which you can test the voltage of the CTD batteries. You'll see a positive and a negative terminal. Set a multimeter to DC and put the positive on the positive end and the negative on the negative end. And we're reading 12.6 volts. So that lets you know that the batteries are have sufficient voltage, but should you detect a low voltage and need to change them, you use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the three screws holding on the battery cover plate. Once the cover plate is removed, you can empty out the six, nine, or 12 D-cell batteries. When you do this, it's also going to give you a chance to inspect the battery bulkhead for any signs of leaking batteries or other corrosion. You can also see inside the battery compartment the reset switch for the CTD. The reset switch is located at the very bottom and when you depress that button down there, it's going to remove the power to the CPU board on the CTD and that's going to reset the circuitry in case the CTD has become uh, corrupted into a certain state. Uh, so you'll just hold that button down for a couple of seconds, lift it up, and reinstall the batteries. Uh, should you find any corrosion in that compartment from leaking batteries, you can try to remove some of it with alcohol or uh, a screwdriver to remove it. Once it's been removed, you can replace the batteries. You'll also note that you can see that there are positive and negative uh, demarcations for inserting the batteries. Once the batteries are being reinserted, you'll put the battery cover plate back on. Once you have the batteries reinstalled, you can replace any O-rings as needed. You also want to give one final check to the O-ring sealing service to make sure there's no foreign material deposited on there. And replace the battery end cap. The battery end cap doesn't need to be on uh, as tight as you can possibly make it. You're looking for some compression of the O-ring seating surface in order to create the seal to make it watertight. Uh, if this is too tight, then it can uh, have an adverse effect and be difficult to remove the next time you're changing the batteries. So you want to make it about hand tight and a little bit more. And that's going to effectively seal out any water. Uh, so that is 
checking and replacing the battery bulkhead of the CCAT CTD. We're going to have a look at care of and cleaning of the Seabird CTD connectivity cell. For care and cleaning of the connectivity cell, I need several chemicals. First of which is just deionized water, our Triton X 100% solution detergent. With the Triton detergent, you'll mix it with DI water to arrive at a 0.1% solution. And you'll also have another mixture of 1% solution. You'll also use bleach occasionally, and this will be mixed to a 1000 ppm concentration. When beginning a cast with the CTD, it's good to use a 0.1% Triton solution to initially flush the connectivity cell. For this, you'll use a uh, syringe can be a good uh, choice. We sell the syringe kit that allows you to backfill the connectivity cell with the solution. So with the syringe, you'll just affix it to the intake of the connectivity cell. And inject it so that it rises past the dissolved oxygen sensor plenum if you're equipped with the dissolved oxygen sensor. Uh, but basically you want to make sure the cell gets filled and then drain it out and remove the syringe. So this is going to create a thin film of the Triton solution and before you do a cast this is going to prevent any oil from adhering to the inside of the connectivity cell which can thereby uh, uh, affect your connectivity measurements. So once you have the connectivity cell with that layer of Triton in the cell, you can begin the CTD cast. Upon initial recovery of the CTD, you're going to want to repeat the same procedure, rinsing it with the Triton solution, followed by a rinse with the syringe and the DI water. Again, the Triton is going to remove any uh, substances that may have stuck to the inside of the connectivity cell throughout the cast. And then you'll use DI water to flush the Triton out. It's important that you don't leave the Triton solution inside the connectivity cell or more specifically the dissolved oxygen sensor. Uh, the Triton solution can have a degrading effect on the DO membrane if left there for an extended period of time. So that's why you want to make sure that you get it rinsed out with the DI water afterwards. If you have a severely fouled sensor, then you can use the bleach solution to clean out the connectivity cell and dissolved oxygen sensor. And so you can repeat the procedure to flush the bleach through there. And that's going to kill anything that might have been uh, living in the connectivity cell that uh, applies a lot to some of the moored instruments. So you can leave the bleach in there for several minutes to uh, soak and then a rinse of either 0.1% or 1% Triton solution to further clean it. You can repeat this procedure five times to clean the connectivity cell and then finish with a flush of DI water. When not in use for periods of more than a few days, such as ship transits or the end of a field season, we have a recommended procedure for storing the connectivity cell and SBE43 dissolved oxygen sensor. The first thing you're going to want to do is clean the connectivity cell and dissolved oxygen sensor, which of course is going to vary depending on whether you've had a moored profiling application or a heavy fouled area. So the proper technique for a final cleaning would be to use either 0.1%, 2% Triton, bleach, or if it's severely fouled, then a hydrochloric acid solution. So when cleaning the connectivity cell for the final time, you will again use the Triton solution and a backfilling syringe, although you can use a, a squeeze bottle if needed, anything as long as you can get the fluid inside the connectivity cell and DO membrane. So you'll affix it to the barbed end of the intake. 
inject it through the DO sensor. When you use a syringe, it's also going to allow you the opportunity to agitate the solution inside the DO flow manifold and the connectivity cell. So you can do that uh, briefly or if uh, you have more fouling, then you can leave the fluid in there for several minutes. But the important thing is that once you have completed the cleaning with any solution, that you perform a final rinse with the deionized water. If needed, you can also flush with DI water using a faucet or a hose as long as you don't have very high pressure running through the system. So again, you want to agitate this slightly to remove any Triton buildup. Once the cell has been cleaned for short-term storage, you can simply close off the exhaust, the pump exhaust, with a red plug we supply from Seabird and the connectivity cell uh, intake with a yellow plug. And that's going to effectively seal off the system to prevent any contaminants from reaching inside the, the plumbing. However, for our longer term storage, you'll want to isolate the dissolved oxygen sensor by removing the plumbing from it and placing tubing around the intake and exhaust of the SBE43 dissolved oxygen sensor. And so we have a piece of tubing around there with uh, a moist piece of sponge in there that keeps a humid environment. The dissolved oxygen sensor is polarized so it's continuously reacting. When you create this small loop right here, it slows down the reaction and allows the oxygen sensor to last much longer. Uh, likewise, you want to close off the connectivity cell with a piece of tubing on both ends. And once you've closed this off, this will prevent any foreign matter from accumulating inside the connectivity cell. And then the sensor can be stored for longer periods of time. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have additional questions, you can find more documentation on our website or call or email us at seabird at seabird.com.